What is going on guys? Grave here. Today I'd like to give you some advanced tips for Black Ops Cold War. A few weeks ago, or last week, I did a video, kind of some basic uh, beginner tips. Today's going to be a little bit more in-depth, some things some of you may or may not know. Before I get into it, make sure if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, if you are watching, take a second to subscribe. I really would appreciate it. And check out everything down in the description. GT Racing, of course, they are the affiliate here on the channel. And also down in the description, the community discord is linked if you'd like to join it. And also my Twitter if you'd like to follow me on Twitter. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the tips. The very first tip is stuns will affect sentry guns. Now I know in core, there's not a lot of sentry guns out there. I've noticed when I pl play hardcore with some of my friends that I see a lot more sentry guns. And sentry guns in hardcore can be very annoying. Um, and I noticed, you know, if you run a stun grenade, you can stun that thing for a couple seconds. It will put it down and kind of disable it. You can get, you kind of move angles so you won't get shot by it. You can move to, to get closer to being able to destroy it. Um, it is very easy to destroy sentry guns no matter what you're playing. If you're playing in hardcore or regular core, all you have to do is stick them with a Simtex. That's usually what I always do. I just stick them with a Simtex. You can throw grenades so far in this game, it's easy to get one at long ranges. But they can be very annoying if they're placed properly. There's some really good places, some really good angles in the game where you can play sentry guns. They're a little bit harder to get grenades to. They're a little bit harder to stun. So make sure if you, you know, you're having annoying sentry guns in a, in a lobby that you're in, that you pull out those stun grenades, start stunning them out, like I said, disabling them. That way you and your team can kind of move around them or, you know, kind of get close enough to destroy them. The second thing that I'd like to talk about is what's going to rank up your weapons quickly. Uh, I know a lot of people want to know how to rank up your weapons. You know, today we're all going to get double weapon XP, so that's going to be really, really nice. But when there's not double weapon XP going on, uh, Hardcore actually ranks up your weapons very well if you do pretty decent because you get a lot of one-shot kill medals. Also, long uh, base objective game. So long time is what I'm meaning by that. So anything like uh, Fire Team, Dirty Bomb, uh, of course, Combined Arms, anything that's going to be a pretty long, lengthy game. You know, A lot of those game modes, whether it be Fire Team, Dirty Bomb, or uh, combined arms are going to last anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes plus some of them may go all, almost to 30 so if you're doing a pretty good job in those games of getting kills and things like that or in those modes you're going to be able to rank your weapons up quickly I know a lot of people have been talking about these modes and I think some people are confused uh, you're not just going to be able to hop in fire team dirty bomb and go you know 8 and 8 in, in a 20 minute game and get a lot of XP on your weapon you're actually going to have to be killing. You're actually going to have to be doing decent. It's the same with hardcore. If you get in, you're only getting you know five or six one-shot kills a game compared to 20 or 30. You're not going to rank your weapon up as quickly. So if you perform well in these long time-based games, you will see a big improvement in uh, ranking up your weapons when, like I said, when there's not double XP going on. But with that double XP starting today, of course, November the 24th and running until November the 30th, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to rank up your weapons no matter what modes you're playing. And I'm sure if you hop into some of these bigger game modes that are longer timed modes and you're playing with double weapon XP, you're going to see a big, big boost in those weapon levels. I did make a video a few days ago showing you kind of my warm up every morning, uh, kind of how I like to go in, shoot bots, that kind of thing. I also talked about how that's very good to start improving your aim and then kind of go from improving your aim drill to a just kind of warm up drill from day to day. Uh, that is something you want to do. If you want to learn to improve your aim, definitely uh, check that video out. It's something I do every year. I always make this video every year. It's something I've always done since uh, Call of Duty has added bots into the game. This is very good, like I said, for improving your aim. That's what I used to improve my aim back in the day. Now, like I said, I've just kind of turned it into a practice drill every morning I can get on, warm up before I sit down with a long, you know, kind of play session, get my hands warmed up, get my hand-eye coordination going, that kind of thing. So, if you do not do that, I would highly recommend that you do. Like I said, you can do it to improve aim, and you also can do it as a warm-up drill as well. The next thing I kind of could say right now with the game being out not that long is use meta weapons. Now, I know things have changed with this uh, most recent update. Uh, the FFAR, which in my opinion was probably the best AR in the game if you knew how to use it, has been nerfed drastically. The MP5 has taken a pretty big hit. Uh, the M16 and the AUG were nerfed. I think they will probably get nerfed again because as of right now, they are still really good. Um, but you want to use things that are the meta weapons when you're starting to play, uh, when you're just first starting out in the game. Uh, if you're trying to run around with things that 
are not really that good, you're going to kind of be in trouble. So in my opinion right now, if you're looking for ARs to use, the AK and the Krig are have definitely moved up to the top tier list, in my opinion, in the AR category. Uh, when it comes to subs, the MP5 is not bad. The 7.4U is probably one of the better subs. It does have some range to it. And also don't sleep on the Bullfrog. The Bullfrog is very decent as well. Uh, when it comes to, like I said, those kind of uh, the Scout rifles, those burst style rifles, uh, the M16 and the AUG are both really good still. They may get some more changes to them. I'm not sure. Uh, like I said, it seems like they're still a bit strong in a lot of people's opinion. So uh, I'm looking to probably have some changes with that eventually. I'm not 100% sure. But just make sure you're trying to use these meta style weapons. Because like I said, if you're trying to use something that's not good, uh, you're going to get beat in a lot of situations. Now later on as the game changes, as the life cycle is a bit longer in the game, uh, people start to figure out different things with different weapons. We have nerfs, we have buffs, we have new weapons coming to the game. Of course, this could change. You can start using off meta style things. But as of right now, from the start, if you're just now starting out, if you only had the game for like a week, you know, a, a little bit longer, using those meta weapons will definitely help out with your score overall, your KD, that kind of thing. Um, the next thing I could tell you that is something that I should do more often and I do not, and that is change your streaks for whatever map that you're on. For example, this map right here, a cruise missile is not really that good on Armada. Most of the time when I call in my cruise missile, I can see enemies, but all of the, the rigs that are kind of going across the top of the map, the cranes, they block a lot of your cruise missile shots. So for something like this, using a grenade launcher and some of these tight, you know, domination or hard point uh, spots, even team deathmatch, there's a lot of areas in here that the grenade launcher would work very, very well. But then if you come out to a map like Cartel, where it's a lot more open spaces, the grenade, not, the grenade launcher may not be as good. Uh, you know, if you go out in any map that has bigger open spots, you might want to use something like a chopper, something like a cruise missile. Uh, a lot of the kind of aerial kill streaks are better for those larger maps. And I get in a bad habit of not changing my kill streaks, but I'm going ahead. I'm going to go ahead and tell you it is one of the best tips that I can give you is change your kill streaks depending on the map. Uh, if you can change those up, you can get a lot more kills with those streaks. You won't be stuck with something like a grenade launcher uh, running around on Miami out in the middle of the street where you really can't get a lot of range out of it. You could have something like a cruise missile. You could have something like an artillery strike or a chopper that will really do some damage in those areas. Um, make sure that you do not use attachments that hurt your bullet velocity. This game's bullet velocity is lower than any other COD. Uh, some of the guns now have better bullet velocity than others, but bullet velocity on a, a barrel is always, in my opinion, the best thing to use. If you can find one that has bullet velocity and damage range, that is a plus. But never really use a barrel that's going to hurt your bullet velocity because you're going to start to feel like you're shooting BBs at people uh, if your bullet velocity is you know, really down on a weapon. If you have better bullet velocity on a weapon, you'll start to see how well these weapons can kill at all different ranges. Um, do not ever chase anyone. That's a tip that I give in every single first person shooter that, video that I've ever done. It is always a bad idea to go after somebody. And I do this myself still to this day from time to time. I'll catch myself doing it. But you never, ever, ever want to chase an enemy. If you chase an enemy, majority of people that are smart players are going to go around the corner and wait on you, get an angle to wait on you. And you're pretty much just going to be feeding them kills. It's kind of the same concept if someone is parked up on a head glitch. You don't want to just keep continuously charging at them because you're just going to feed them kills and feed them kill streaks. Play smart is pretty much what this kind of means. You know, you just want to not chase people, not to go after people on head glitches uh, because like I said, you're just going to be feeding them everything. And in this game where it's pretty strong, uh, you're going to be a pretty strong player. If you can hold corners, hold head glitches, you know, you're pre-aimed in a lot of places. You're going to win a lot of those gunfights. And if you're chasing enemies, most of those play, like I said, most players are going to get on a head glitch hold an angle, uh, hold you, you know, with an aim down sight, something like that. So when you come around that corner chasing them, you're going to be pretty much toast. Um, learn the different movements in the game. Uh, jump shotting is not as great in this game, in my opinion. Slide canceling is still a thing, and regular sliding, of course, is a thing. Just be careful when sliding. In my opinion, sliding is nowhere near as good as it was in the beta. Of course, it did get nerfed. But if you slide a lot, you're going to be heard. Even if you have a ninja on, sliding is still extremely loud, and everybody's going to know they're, you're, that you're coming if they're close by, they have a good headset. So make sure you learn the movement, but only use it when necessary. I do slide cancel a good bit, but I try to avoid sliding at all costs all, most of the time. And I try to avoid jump shotting a lot because it seems like jump shotting is a bit odd. You do get a little bit of that bounce to it when you jump shot. 
So make sure that you know you're using the movement you know that is available in game. You know, like ledge sliding and that kind of thing. But don't overuse a lot of this because some of it, like I said, just regular sliding makes a lot of noise in game. One more thing that uh, I think is very helpful is one of, uh, of course, the different field upgrades you can run, of course, is a jammer. Uh, a jammer is very good for um, jamming out things like the trip mines and that kind of thing. If you, if you did not know, if you have a jammer down an area and there's a trip mine down that area, you will actually see like this little blue looking shock kind of stuff over the top of it. When you see the, the when you see the trip mine itself, it'll have this kind of blue glow over it. And that means, of course, that jammer has jammed that trip mine. Same thing for a gas mine, that kind of thing. So jammers do come in very handy if you have a team that's just running tons of trip mines. You can start placing those out and kind of getting rid of some of those annoying things that, you know, the other team could be using. And last but not least, have different classes with different, uh, you know, kind of setups with the same weapon. So if you need a class that has Ghost on it and Ninja, but then you're playing a team that has a, a you know, a lot of kill streaks out like Choppers and things, you may want to have a class made with like Ghost and Cold Blood that you can swap to in the middle of the game. Make sure that you have a lot of classes that you can swap out and kind of back and forth between, uh, you know, with the same weapons, but some different perks. That way, in case you need to use something different, and you don't have to go in and adjust your entire loadout every single game. I try to make sure I have two uh, loadouts of each weapon that I really like to use with some different perks on it in case I need to change things up on the fly. Of course, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. If you liked it, hit the like, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.